Meet Maud Beaton. Here's my other cousin, Mr. Oscar Van Ryn. May I introduce you to Miss Maud Beaton? How do you do? The young woman rumored to be Jay Gould's illegitimate daughter who had been living in Paris has a paid companion and who Oscar finds suitable and charming. Can anyone say gay? Sure, she is an heiress with money and Oscar can smell money a mile away. But is there more to his interest in Maud Beaton than just her money? I am betting that there is. A lot more. I am absolutely thrilled that they are bringing a lesbian on board in season two of The Gilded Age and that the portrayal of a lavender marriage is on the horizon. But wait, you might say, how do I know that Maud Beaton is a lesbian and that she is going to marry Oscar in the tradition of a lavender marriage? Let me back up a minute and discuss what a lavender marriage is, for those who might not know, and then I'll get to an example in history of a well-known lavender marriage that could easily be the inspiration for the show writers. And I will also discuss the obvious clues that Maud Beaton is sure to be the token lesbian on the show. So what is a lavender marriage? Simply put, a lavender marriage is when a gay man and a gay woman get married to disguise their sexual orientation. Or one of the partners could be gay while the other is straight, but either way, it is intended to stop any questions from family or society at large. Lavender marriages have gone by other names in American culture, but I don't want to get into that, because it can all be a bit confusing. Like, how did lavender even get attached to the word marriage? It's a bit convoluted, but stick with me on this. It starts with the 7th century BC poet by the name of Sappho, who you might know, is the origin of the term lesbian, because she lived on the Isle of Lesbos and she had a thing for women. She especially had a thing for younger women who wore violet tiaras. Who knew that women even wore tiaras back in the days of ancient Greece? In truth, they wore simple headbands that were called tiaras, and I guess some of them were decorated with violets since a dye the color of lavender, or violet, wasn't even invented yet. From this ancient poetic reference, lesbians took up the practice of gifting the delicate flowers as an expression of sapphic interest. And over time, the color lavender came to serve as a signal that identified them as gay. And of course, by the 19th century, tiaras had evolved into another whole thing with diamonds and such, but I digress. Suffice it to say that once a purple synthetic dye was invented in 1856, it hit the fashion scene where women could wear purple dresses, and even men took to pairing lavender trousers with blue waistcoats without anyone batting an eye. This fashion trend lasted for a while, but towards the end of the 19th century, the public began linking men wearing lavender with homosexuality. This was probably thanks to another poet by the name of Oscar Wilde, who co-opted the lesbian fondness for the color lavender by referring to his purple hours spent with rent boys, rent boys meaning male prostitutes. And by now you might have figured out that Oscar Wilde was as gay as Oscar Van Ryn from that scene in The Gilded Age Episode 3, where Oscar Wilde is talking to Aurora Fane about Oscar Van Ryn's friend John Adams. And the young man with him? John Adams. He's an old friend of Oscar's. Yes, indeed, yes. I see that getting rather complicated. I don't know what you mean. Or should you? You're far too well brought up. Oscar Wilde is making an innuendo in regards to Oscar's new interest in Maud Beaton in the midst of his longtime friendship with John Adams, which goes over Aurora's head completely because only a gay aware person would catch his drift. As an aside, by 1884, Oscar Wilde himself would be in a lavender marriage with a woman who was straight and didn't find out about his homosexuality until several years after they first married, upon which she took their two children and left him for good. Okay, so back to the term lavender marriage, which never really came into being until the years of early Hollywood when the studios made extreme efforts to hide the sexual orientation of their many, and I do mean many, gay stars. Such stars as Rudolph Valentino, who was paired with a lesbian costume and set designer, and Rock Hudson, who hurriedly married his lesbian friend Phyllis Gates to prevent being outed by Confidential Magazine. And the list goes on. Now let's talk about a well-known lavender marriage of the Gilded Age. It didn't take place in New York, but rather Paris, 
You know that place that Maude Beaton lived just before she met Oscar in episode three. But I, I wonder why our paths have never crossed till now. Probably because I've been living in Europe, in Paris mostly. It's 1892 and a 28-year-old wealthy American-born heiress, recently divorced, by the name of Winnaretta Singer is suggested, through a series of mutual acquaintances as the perfect wife for a gay French aristocrat who happened to be an amateur composer with connections in the French opera music scene, by the name of Prince Edmond de Polignac. Polignac was practically destitute, and Winnaretta had gobs of money thanks to her inheritance from her daddy, Isaac Singer, who was the founder of what became one of the first American multinational businesses, the Singer Sewing Machine Company. The prince, age 57, was so impoverished through bad investments in a series of get-rich-quick schemes that his nephews, who had been helping him with loans, noted that desperate action was needed. The solution that they suggested was marriage to a woman of appropriate means. Polignac discussed the matter with a close friend who knew somebody who knew somebody, who knew, well, you get my drift. Out of these conversations arose the name of Winnaretta Singer. Her first marriage had lately been annulled and her social status could be improved by marrying a prince, even a poor one. Plus, Winnaretta was a great fan of the opera scene and hoped to make inroads as a patron of the art. And the arrangement would have other benefits. Polignac's homosexuality would not be an issue as Winnaretta was an avowed lesbian. Her interest in music only sweetened the pot, so the groundwork was laid that amounted to what was known in France as a mariage blanc, or unconsummated marriage, in which each partner would have their own bed. Winnaretta's social position, compromised by her annulment slash divorce, would be improved by an alliance with one of the oldest and most distinguished aristocratic families in France, and the prince would get all the money he could possibly need to continue with his musical compositions. With the advantages clear to all parties, Winnaretta and Edmund established an affectionate friendship centered around their mutual love for music, and a year after the idea had first been broached, in November 1893, Edmund proposed marriage to Winnaretta, and she accepted. On December 15, 1893, the couple were married in the Chapelle de Karma in Paris. The union even received the blessing of Pope Leo XIII, who of course, much like Aurora Fane, didn't have a clue. The marriage freed Edmund to create, and Winnaretta was happy to promote his creations. Winnaretta became a patron in public musical circles, and with her husband, she hosted a music salon in her vaulted, two-story ceiling drawing room, which became a haven for Paris's musical and artistic avant-garde. Both Winnaretta and the prince had their share of lovers, but Winnaretta was probably the more promiscuous. She had so many female lovers that she was dubbed the queen of the Paris lesbian community. So what makes me think that Maude Beaton is a lesbian and a perfect candidate for a lavender marriage with Oscar? The hints are already there in episode 3. One big one was that she had been living in Paris, which was a 19th century hotbed of lesbian culture even before the gay pari of circa 1933, Victor Victoria. When people speak of gay Paris, they think that when they say Paris is gay, they mean that gay Paris is gay. Maud also has a, uh, paid companion, which is often code for lover. Throughout history, the concept of a paid companion, or a woman providing financial support to another woman in a romantic relationship, wasn't unheard of in the lesbian community. One example is Natalie Clifford Barney, an American expatriate writer who had a romantic relationship with the artist Romaine Brooks. Brooks, an accomplished painter, was financially well-off, and her support allowed Barney to focus on her writing and organizing the literary salons that became famous in early 20th century Paris. And why do you think that Oscar and Maude hit it off so well from the second their paths crossed? I propose that Gay Dar was at play, which makes me think, hope, that a lavender marriage might be just around the corner. And what about the real-life historical people behind the Gilded Age characters? Find out here. <laughs>